Hey everyone, what's up? Unrested back with another JFAC. And today we're gonna to talk about a question that I really started to get a lot around 2019, 2020. And it mostly concerns technology and tech-based products coming out of Japan. A lot of people who watch my channel are of my same age and uh, one thing that we all remember when we were kids was that we looked upon Japan as one of the biggest technical zeniths within every country within the world. We thought that Japan was pretty much on another level of technology whenever we saw something new about computers. It was from Japan. Cell phones, it was from Japan. Video games, it was from Japan. Robots, it was from Japan. But recently, we don't see that too much anymore. Recently, some of the newest, I would say, cell tech and uh, smartphone tech, computer tech, is coming out of South Korea these days. Um, and the rest, as far as video games and even robotics is concerned, comes out of America, my own home country. And that's always made me kind of ponder when I came here why I was so surprised at the lack of innovation in certain aspects of Japanese society. For example, small things like your simple everyday kitchen appliances are not very good here in Japan. Dishwashers, blenders, ovens, stoves, they're not up to snuff. I can tell you from personal use, I got my dishwasher running in the background right now and let me tell you, a Hitachi dishwasher is pretty lame. It doesn't really do much as far as cleaning is concerned. You pretty much have to almost completely clean your own plates before you even put them in there. And blenders, I can't find a good blender in Japan. Yes, I can order off of Amazon.jp, but am I ordering that blender from Japan? No. Um, there's a lot of other things too. We haven't really seen a big leap forward in robotics for a long time. Around the 90s, early 2000s, I'm sure you remember seeing uh, a couple very sort of confusing robots like the baby robot, uh, the Asimov, um, that one guy whose name I doesn't don't remember and he made a robot that looked exactly like himself which is not only creepy but somewhat egotistical and it moved like a strange rubber mannequin. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about if you've watched anything about robotics documentaries. And after that, that was about it. Um, these days there may be a few innovations as far as factory production is concerned with robotics, um, but that's about it. I will say Japan is still a leader in the car industry just due to the make of their cars being kind of unstoppable. I mean, if there's one thing Japan is good at, it's making a car that never stops running. I can say that about my Subaru and uh, any other Japanese car I've ever seen or driven here in Japan. But why has Japan fallen behind in so many other versions of technology? Well, there's kind of two things going on, according to my own observations, my POV, if you will. Um, I'm not going to bring a ton of statistics to the table. I'm not going to throw a bunch of facts at you. I'm just going to tell you what I see as far as my everyday life here in Japan with the income of news and media and everyday friends, family, and even workplace people. How is life not really leading to new technological developments in Japan? Well, first off, there is a lot of old technology that is sort of legacy technology kept around far longer than it is in any other country, which in turn does not lead to people adapting to new technology. Now you might say, Scott, like, what are you talking about? Like, how old are we talking here? Well, do you know a place you can buy VHS tapes in America? No? They're pretty easy to find here in Japan. You can find a VHS player pretty much anywhere. Landlines are still commonly used in a lot of homes. Um, 
you can go into just about any restaurant here that's like family owned and you're gonna see a tube TV. Now I understand some of the money saving aspects of these and buying second hand and I myself do the same thing, but there's other aspects too. For example, computers are not taught in public schools here in Japan which leads to generation after generation not adapting to any sort of new technology coming out with computers. Uh, if you talk to anybody about even learning Linux or you know, operating outside of a system that's Windows, th they don't even quite understand what you're talking about 90% of the time. Every once in a while, you will find a budding technological standout from the rest but most Japanese don't have a lot of knowledge of computers and this isn't their fault. This is more so a public school system's fault. Um, computers are not pushed and it's not like they don't have the budget. You might say, well, Scott, if these are public schools, well, no, not quite. Um, there are school districts with quite a lot of money. Yes, I realize there's some very rural parts of Japan where their budget isn't quite as big as like a Tokyo public school, but I have seen multiple schools that have cased iPads, cased up 3DSs to learn kanji on that they just don't use. I've seen schools I've gone to with smart screens, um, smart boards, and they just don't use it because nobody there at the school ever learned how to use the technology. There's been times where I taught as an ALT at schools and I would wheel out some of their technology and they'd be like, well, nobody can teach you how to use this. And I'd be like, well, you just hook up a computer to it and start messing around and you'll learn it. And they're like, oh, okay, if you think you know how to use it, then I guess go ahead. And I would show them things with technology their school had that they didn't even know they could use or didn't know how to use. Like for example, something as simple as if you don't have a USB cord, sometimes you can use a really old S cord to hook up an old smart board. They, they didn't even realize that and just wheeled their smart board back into the dusty office. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that going on and I feel like this is mostly a failure of the very, very elderly driven government. And let me tell you, the government here in Japan completely revolves around the elderly to adapt, learn, and change their systems of ways. Now, another thing a lot of people don't realize, and this is something very specific to Japan, is due to small house sizes in Japan, that's because we're all grouped together in a very tight area, um, we have an entire generation here that did not grow up with desktops in the house. So you, myself, we possibly grew up with desktops as far back as like 1985. Yes, I had my first desktop. You might have too. It might have been an 888, a TRS-80 trash. Um, it might have been, you know, a DOS-based command system. Y you know, before even things like mouse and Windows existed, you know, before there was Mac. You know, we, we were messing around with stuff like that. That's never happened to a generation here. When desktops were around, they were actually way too big to have in people's houses. And if you take a look at some very small mansion type apartments or one room apartments, you would understand why. Now that laptops have come out, you know, and they've been out for quite some time at this point, slowly Japan has adapted. But the makers of said laptops here make very weak, very underpowered, like for example, Softech or Dynabook. They make just garbage PCs, absolute garbage. I mean, nothing with anything close to a terabyte for hard drive, you know. You'd be lucky if you could find four gigs of RAM in some of these, it's, it's crazy. I, I won't buy anything Japanese made as far as a laptop is concerned. Um, I mostly stick to Zeus and ROGs for gaming and any other technology I want to work on. Um, yes, sometimes people do adapt to Mac here, but Mac is considered very posh sometimes in Japan and has a certain air of, oh, well, you'd only buy that if you're an artist, which I'm sure that was very true back in like the late 90s. But these days, you know, both PCs can do whatever the other can do. It, there's no limit. Yeah. There is a huge lack of learning how to just do even basics on computers because the public schools here are lacking so much in computers. There is no computer class. Even back in 1983, when I was a kindergartner at my Catholic school that made less money than public schools in the area, 
they had a computer class that we went to every week and just let us mess around on computers. Did we learn a lot other than Oregon Trail and like Fortress Attacker? Not really, but we learned how to use a simple thing like a keyboard. These days I've tried to teach kids at my school using computers and I am quite surprised at the learning curve I have to start them with. For example, things like they haven't learned yet that a mouse and the arrow do the same thing together and they have to keep looking back and forth. Something that I'm sure if you had grown up with, you would adapt to very quickly. Um, they are very used to smartphones, sometimes to an extent that I kind of get scared with how much I see smartphones and Nintendo Switch used around Japan. Now, maybe this happens quite a bit in America. I actually haven't lived in America since smartphones and Switch came out, so I don't get to see a lot of American kids. Um, but a lot of kids wander around here while carrying either a cell phone, an iPad, or a Switch. And I mean, I'm talking everywhere. Like on the train, I can kind of understand because you're sitting down the whole time and sometimes waiting for a very long route. But like at the grocery store, walking at the park, like going on a walk with their parents, going to school, like, I'm a, man, oh man, put it down for a second, kid. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of technology too, but uh, one thing I really hate is when people use like a cell phone or, you know, while they're walking or especially high school kids riding bikes here. Dude, put your cell phone away while you're riding a bike. You're going to hit an old lady. I can probably get out of the way fast enough, but I really worry about the old people I see walking down the street and some kid is just wibbling, wobbling back and forth on their bike while they're staring down at their phone. Anyway, getting off on a tangent, getting back on topic technology. This is why it's behind here in Japan. There's a generation that did not grow up with technology at home and even now generations are growing up without technology at school. I feel like this has definitely hindered the advancement of technological learning here in Japan. On top of that you have far more old people here than young people and that is also holding things back where their primary objectives are for their own wants and needs, which look, I understand it. You want your benefits. You did your time. You worked hard your whole life, but none of those usually tend to revolve around improving technology because, well, why would they care? I mean, you know, how many years do you have left on earth? Do you, you're not going to know what's going to come around in the next 100 years. I myself too, if I was that age, probably would not be that interested in saying, well, I want to fund a bunch of robots I'll never see, you know, <laughs> I can completely understand. But the other thing is, and I think this is probably the least mentioned aspect of Japan, is that there is a generation that doesn't want to grow up now. And this is a generation where we're finally seeing, I would say, what is a lashback for everyone's father having to work insane hours at companies for the generation before, for the bubble era Japan. They grew up with dads who were never home, um, they grew up with moms who had to work around the clock to do housewife stuff. And they were either raised completely by their moms at home and almost never getting to see their dad or raised as though they were a single kid, even if they had a dad and vice versa, if the mom was the career woman. All right. So they've seen how their family has had to sacrifice their entire life, their happiness and their living at work at some point that has to seem absurd to them I mean think about it you work how many hours a day for a house you're never in for a car you never get to drive for a big TV you never get to watch yet <laughs> for a kid who's progressing through his life that you never get to see grow up boy I'm sure this eventually became very absurd to the next generation where they were just like why why would I sacrifice everything for a life of misery at work? And this is coming back to haunt the Japanese government now. We've got, you know, the, the lowest ever as far as the next generation going into any kind of big careers, going for any kind of training, for trade schools, for colleges. Does it still happen? Yes, of course. We've got some follow-ups, but there's lots of jobs that aren't being covered. A lot of the Japanese arts, the apprenticeships, they're just dying out completely 100%. Um, there are multiple salarymen jobs that are just dying out as well. Um, you're even seeing small jobs like for the Yakuza and stuff like that. Those jobs are dying out because there is no inclination for any kid to want to work this hard to not live a life. 
and you can't really blame them for that. I think if I watched my own father suffer through 14 to 16 hour work days, I really wouldn't want to follow in his footsteps. Um, luckily for me, I grew up in a household where I got to see my parents all the time. Um, but that must have been very hard for the generation here in Japan that did not. And I can understand why they wouldn't want to copy that again with their life. On top of it though, this is also leading to some other problems. This means things like moving out are not happening anymore. Kids are not moving out. And if they don't move out, they usually don't get married. If they don't get married, they don't have a family. If they don't have a family, they don't start a next generation. If they don't start a next generation, there's nobody new learning any technology. All right. After you grow up and you get settled down into a career, you tend to follow that career for the rest of your life here in Japan. Yes, I realize in other countries you can continuously change. You can go in and out, morph your job into different things. You might not even follow what you studied in college. I've heard something like 70% of people in America don't actually go into a job for what they got a degree in in college. That is not true in Japan. You follow your career path almost your entire life to the point that if you ever lose that career, your life might as well be over. And I feel like while this has worked out for the past generation, for this one, it has not. And this is leading to deficits from everything to social security, pensions, and worst of all, technology. And this is why you're seeing Japan fall so far behind. If you feel any different about this topic, or if you have some input that you want to put, whether you like what I said or absolutely hate it and disagree, say, Scott, you're totally wrong. It's okay. Let me know in the comments down below. And a little bit more about today, I want to just make a little bit of an announcement. If you like some of the topics I'm talking about today, about a generation that is not growing up, I'm going to actually dive deeper into this topic with a friend of mine who just recently wrote a book. His name's Ahmed, and it's a book concerning anime, all right? It's concerning the generation of grass-fed male, all right? It's concerning the maturity of Japanese and how social media and regular media has affected them. And it's going to go very deep into these topics uh, due to a large research project that Ahmed did and a book he's about to publish. I'm not getting out here to try and push, you know, and sell you stuff. Don't worry. I just, I've been talking to my friend about this for actually quite some time. We've discussed this subject. And now that his stuff is about to come out, I feel like he has a full completion of his research and we can kind of launch a video on it and just talk about this subject. And we'll get deeper into that in the next two upcoming weeks. Um, I plan to work on and write those episodes ahead of time. Not too scripted. You guys know how I am. I try to, you know, free talk everything out. But, you know, I like to swirl it around in my head a little bit first. Until next time, I'm unrested. I'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good one.